this webinar, where you'll get an overview of the basics of Zoom. The COVID crisis has made everyone shift the way that we connect and communicate for work and for pleasure. Although the situation put us back on our heels initially, the positive spirit of the American people has come through and we're finding a new and innovative ways to stay connected. This webinar is brought to you by Virginia Cooperative Extension and your presenters are myself, Carlin Raffi, and Aisha Salazar. Aisha is an Associate Extension Agent with Virginia Cooperative Extension, specializing in family and consumer sciences. Aisha works in Arlington County and the City of Alexandria. She oversees the Master Food Volunteer and Master Financial Education Volunteer programs and co-leads the Energy Masters program and Eco Action Arlington. Aisha holds a Master of Science degree in Biohazardous Threat Agents and Emerging Infectious Diseases from Georgetown University and a Bachelor of Science in Biology with a Spanish moniker from Virginia Tech. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Human Nutrition, Foods and Exercise at Virginia Tech and an extension specialist with Virginia Cooperative Extension. I work in the area of community health, developing health-related programs conducted by extension agents throughout Virginia. As you can tell, Aisha and I are not Zoom experts. We do have some very practical knowledge about the use of Zoom that we have gained as we turn to this program to help us continue our education work and community, as well as stay in touch with our family and friends. Today, we hope to get you started with Zoom and give you the confidence to begin using it. So, to get started, we want to learn just a little bit about you, and we're going to use one of the features of Zoom to gather this information. The poll feature. This is a really fun feature. I'm hoping you're going to be able to, um, to use it. So I'm going to open a poll that should appear on your screen, hopefully. If you will, please select the answer that best reflects how you feel. The first poll asks about your level of experience with Zoom. And after a few minutes, I'll close the poll, and then we'll get to look at the results together. Good. Great, everybody's answering it. Okay, I think that I think that's about everybody. Hopefully everybody has had a chance to answer that poll. So I'm ending the polling now and now I'm going to share the results. And you all should be seeing the results. So the results show that there's one person with no experience. Good. We're going to give you confidence with, our, with what we do today. A lot of you, about 20 of you, have a little bit of experience but don't feel real like you're experts. And then we have two people who are, have a lot of experience. So those two people, you're going to chime in and, and help with any hard questions that we can't answer. So that's great. So good. Now what I'd like to do is launch just one more quick poll. And these polls are really easy to make. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to use them in your future meetings. But this poll is asking about how confident you are that you can use Zoom. Whether you've ever used it or not, how confident are you that you can use Zoom? Okay, good. So we have some people who are not confident at all. Uh, the majority have somewhat, are somewhat confident, and seven people are really confident. Great. I hope by the end of this webinar, you're going to have a lot of confidence to at least get started. So let, let's, um, whoops, let me see if I can, I didn't share the results. There you go. Sorry about that. So now you guys should be seeing the results. Similar to your experience with Zoom. Okay. So now I'm going to close this poll and I'm going to turn it over to Aisha and we're going to get started. Thanks, Carlin. Um, let us know if you still see the poll feature up there. What you can do is you can exit out um, if for whatever reason it's still lingering up there. Um, I know when we were preparing for this, we had a, a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out why it wasn't disappearing for us. So like we said, we're not experts. Um, so before we get started, I just want to go over some control buttons that you have on your Zoom. This is uh, most of what you should be seeing right now um, as a participant. It tends to vary based on the settings that we've allowed. Um, but on the bottom left, there's a mute button. You can click that. Um, I believe we've already we've muted you already, but uh, down the road, you'll see that you will have the option of uh, mute yourself, unmute yourself, and then if you click this little arrow upwards, it'll tell you uh, which type of, you can select the microphone to use. 
So for example, I actually have two computer, a computer and then a computer screen, um, and there are two different microphones that I could be using. Um, the stop video feature, um, this is so that you can turn on or off your video. For example, if I click on mine, I will stop my video um, and you see an image there. And I will, um, what you can do is you can actually add your own image there as well. You can add a profile picture or something like that if you'd like. Um, so when I unclick that, now you can see my video. Uh, you can also click that little arrow and you can choose virtual backgrounds um, or access your full video settings. And I'll talk a little bit more about background in a bit. Um, the participants, this is where you can click and see who is in the meeting. You can actually go in there and then um, if you highlight above your name, there should be a little section that says more or three little dots and you can actually change your name in there as well. Um, the Q&A, this is where you can ask questions and answers, but today we're actually gonna be using the chat box instead. Um, since this is usually, the Q&A is not enabled um, when you have a regular Zoom meeting. Uh, it's more so if you have a webinar format and today we're actually in the webinar format. But you can use the chat to put in questions, answer anything. Um, yes, thank you, Mark. That is perfect um, to point out. So it is a slightly different um, view for you all. Um, and then the sc share screen. Um, right now we're making it so that um, I believe just Carla and I can share our screens, um, but we can, we'll play around with that a little bit later. Right now I'm sharing my screen and that's what you're seeing as a PowerPoint. And then you have the record feature and then the leave when you leave the meeting. Um, if you're hosting a meeting, you can also leave it and then transfer the hosting opportunities to somebody else if they need additional uh, support. And so first off, how to set up an account. Um, I know this is a little confusing because you already uh, needed a login um, to, to this meeting, but you didn't necessarily need an account um, in order to log into the meeting. So that's one of the benefits of Zoom. Um, but you can join um, through an existing account. So you'll get um, an email if you already have one. Um, so for example, I have a work account and then I also have a personal account. So my personal account I created using free. Um, this zoom.us uh, backslash or signup link doesn't work very well. So if you just go to the main Zoom website, it'll show you where you can sign in. And then you put in your email address, you have to put in your date of birth, um, that information is not shared, um, but it's a way to sign in and, and create your account. So, like I said, you don't actually need uh, a Zoom account in order to join as a participant, but if you want to host a meeting, then you do need to create a, an account um, and it's in or, or invite people to join the meeting with you. Um, and you can update your settings. Um, the free one is fine. That's what I've been using personally. Um, the work one that we have is, is great because it has a few more features. Um, and I don't know, Carlin, I think right now people are muted, is that right? Um, but what you should be seeing in your settings Aisha, now. Mm -hmm. Sure. Aisha, I'm actually um, allowing everybody now to talk. So they should be seeing okay, their microphone kind of appear and you're able then to um, unmute yourself. Uh, That's the danger of unmuting. So we're, we're all experiencing this. When you unmute everybody, Sometimes somebody's um, audio is reverberating and it causes lots of disturbance. So for all of those, uh, for all of you on the call right now, you should be seeing a, a little microphone next to your name under, uh, by, by your name, and you can mute yourself. And maybe Aisha, you're gonna show them how to mute themselves, right? So everybody, yeah. I've allowed you to talk, but I'm gonna ask you now to mute yourself. So if you pick, uh, press the bottom left, um, that mute. When you mute yourself, you'll see the microphone turn red with a red uh, slash going through it. There you go, and I see everybody's doing it. Very good. Okay, good. So that's gonna, that's always gonna help you in your meetings, right? As soon as you unmute people, then lots of things can happen. And so asking them to, first teaching them how to mute themselves, and then asking them to do that in case that, you know, somebody comes in, it's a lot of noise in the background, or you get that reverberation. Just having them mute their mic helps. Okay, go ahead, Aisha. So this next slide is just to show you what it would look like when you join a meeting. Um, you'll open the desktop client, um, and you can either sign in uh, through the web, or you can sign in through, if you have it downloaded on your, uh, to your computer as well. Um, but then, 
this link right here, the sign up link um, or the main Zoom website is helpful um, for any questions if you have, because it depends on also that your view depends on if you're using an iPad or if you're using a cell phone, um, if you're using a, a Mac, um, it just varies. Um, I don't use the Mac, the iPhone, <laughs> any, any Apple products, so my experience has only been using um, just a regular computer. So I can't speak very well to that, but if somebody else has experienced that, feel free to mention like what your experience has been using that. Um, and I know some people who, when they use their iPad, because they have better internet service on it, or for whatever reason, it actually works better for them. Um, so if you do find that sometimes it doesn't work in your lap, on your computer or your laptop, maybe switching to the iPad and seeing how that might work. Um, this is here just to show you how you can schedule your meeting. Um, so if you're actually inviting people to host a meeting, um, this is stuff that we did on our end where uh, you can go into your computer um, and when you have your, your interface set up, you'll see this little screen here where it says schedule a new meeting. Um, so you can either join an existing meeting or you can schedule a new one. And so you could go into your web portal, click the meetings and then schedule a meeting. And then you can actually go in and set the time, the date, um, any other features you would like. Um, so Carlin did this ahead of time in order to create this meeting. Um, and she put in certain parameters, um, like, you know, sometimes there's passwords you set in, there's other things that you can, other features you can use, uh, depending on, on high level security that you'd like. Um, when you're inviting people to join your meeting, you can invite them by sharing the invitation or showing a link. Um, so you can copy the invitation. So this is kind of what it would look like on your web, where it would say, here's the, the meeting, these are the dates, and then you can add it to your calendar. Um, so this is a great feature that I like. Um, when I meet with uh, friends, what I sometimes do, um, like I met with my sister-in-law the other day, I took this join URL, I copied it. The other way you can do it is when you are in the meeting itself, um, on the top left of your screen, what you'll see, you'll see a little, um, when you're in the meeting and probably not in this format, you'll see a little thing on the left um, that will, if you hover over it, it'll tell you the meeting ID, you can copy it, and then you can just email that to somebody or text it or whatever way you would like. Um, and so there's different ways that you can access that. So a couple things with security. Um, Zoom has um, increased the security parameters um, over last few months especially because you know a lot of people are using Zoom trying to find ways to connect. Um, so two features that are really great that it does or that you can use and use you can use a random meeting ID. So instead of using your own personal meeting ID, especially if you're doing like a large event, like let's say you're doing a family reunion across the country or something, um, you want to make sure that you have your a, a simple a, rather than your personal ID. Um, so that way uh, your meeting isn't constantly running. Um, and then also that way people don't copy that and share it and then everybody has your personal meeting ID from then on and they can access it. Um, the other thing you can do is you can password protect it. So you put a password. So in order to join the meeting, you have to type in the password. And if you don't have that, then you can't get into the meeting. Um, so that's a good feature to have as well. Uh, the waiting room. Uh, I believe you all should have seen this when you um, first joined the meeting. Um, it just depends on if we disable it, I guess. But this is a great thing to have. It's automatically set up um, if you use your personal meeting ID. Um, but it's basically think of it as like a waiting room, um, like you go to the doctor's office. So they're just kind of waiting for the appointment to start, the meeting to start. Um, and this is a great way to test your audio, test your video. Um, and it's a good way on your end. So if you're having friends over and you don't want like some random person coming in, um, actually know of somebody that randomly got an invitation to a Zoom meeting, didn't know who it was from, so he joined it. Turns out it was a family reunion, and he just joined it, and so, or actually it was like a high school reunion, sorry. So he just joined it, he just played along like he knew everybody. By the end, they all realized that they didn't know him, and so the following week, they were gonna try to have another meeting and try to convince their other friends that like this new person that they had met was their longtime friend. Um, so that's an example where you don't wanna get stuck in some random meeting where you don't know somebody, or hey, you might know, you might make new friends, um, but it's a good feature to have as well. Um, so you can, if you don't recognize the name or the phone number, you know, you can choose to admit them. Um, so you can share your screen too. So one thing that I did is I shared uh, my screen that you can see right now. And then before that, um, it also shares my computer sound. Um, so any sound that is played through my computer, you would be able to hear it. Um, so I was playing music earlier. 
um, and you can hear that. It's also really good if you're playing videos. So for example, if you want to share a video with somebody, um, you know, maybe you can't send a message, like a long video you took of your, your, your grandchild, uh, but you wanna share that to somebody, this is a good way where you can play the clip um, and share it this way, um, or something you, you recorded. Um, so that way more people can see it. So this is an example of what you would see on your settings if you're trying to share your screen. Um, remember I said this is what the toolbar would look like. Um, on the bottom, there's a share screen, a little um, green box, and then when you click that and hover over the arrow, when you click that itself, you get different options for screens, and it all depends on how many screens you have. Um, so yesterday when I was practicing this, I had about 10 different screen options because I had too many browsers open in my window. Today I went ahead and closed it because I knew we were going to do this webinar and it would be, it would cause some issues. So um, when I went in, I shared just the PowerPoint, but you can share your entire screen so the person can see everything that's on your computer, um, or you can just share different features. And then here's the one, the iPhone, iPad, if you want to share something off of that as well. Um, and then the whiteboard, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So preparing for a meeting. So on the left is a picture um, that I took from an NBC background. Um, a lot of places are giving you fun backgrounds and different things you can use. Um, so for example, right now I have this, the one that is, that's vis visible here is from Leslie Nope from Parks and Rec. Um, so that's what, you know, I could use that as my background. I'm using a Virginia Tech background um, and I'll show you why. Um, so right now, if I go under that, that video, and um, click the little arrow up, I can choose my virtual background or I can do video settings. If I go into video settings right now, I can click into virtual background. You can't see this at the moment, but you guys can try this too. Um, if I hit none, you will see my background. And you will, you'll see is that, um, you know, in general, like Carlin's background, she has a very interesting background. She's centered, she has some bookcases and some pictures. So it's a very interesting background. In my case, you see uh, my window, I'm in my basement, so you see my window and then um, the window to the door. So you see a lot of light coming in behind me, so it darkens up the room, and so you can't really see me. I have a light in front of me, but at nighttime, if I'm doing the same, if I were to do this meeting at like 7 p.m. at night, all that light would be right on my face and I would be, um, you know, have a lot of, uh, like no, no complexion whatsoever. So you do want to make sure that wherever you're doing your meeting, you have a good background, um, that it's not too dark, so that way you can see yourself, um, and then you can use fun backgrounds. So that's part of the reason that I use this background, because um, another good reason to use the background is you can hide a mess if you haven't, uh, haven't cleaned. <laughs> so um, I tend to use that a lot. So Carlin's playing around with hers. Um, I can put in some leaves. I can do all sorts of stuff. I can put that Leslie Note background so now it looks like I'm at a fancy office. Um, you know, this is a picture I took um, of food from a farmer's market. And so this is a, a fun background, like if I were doing something fun. Um, so it's kind of fun when you start playing around with this and joining friends for meetings and, and gatherings. Um, you can change that background around so that's more fun and, and interesting. Um, does anybody have any uh, Aisha, did we want did we want to see if they I didn't know if we wanted to see if they could actually start their video and play with backgrounds. I'm not sure if we wanted to dare yeah. do that. So it does say uh, um, sometimes you might need a green screen. I don't use a green screen, um, but some people what they do is they take a bed sheet um, or like a, a green towel or something and hang it up behind them because right now you'll see that my my hands kind of disappear and blend into the background as I'm moving. I don't know if you guys can see that. So depending on how I'm moving, my you, you know you can see parts of my hair, parts of my hand, and so that's the the downside of not having the green screen. Um, but uh, having like a, a a tablecloth or something that's green pinned behind you can help. Um, if you'd like, what you can try to do is turn on your video, um, so you can see yourself first of all, and then click that little arrow, and then you can go into the setting which says choose for choose background. Um, so I don't know if some of you are trying this right now, but you can actually play around with your background if you'd like to. Um, I don't think anybody is doing that at the moment, but I do see some people have pictures already set up as their, um, as their image. So that's another feature you can do. So when you go into the video, 
you can go to video settings and then you can go to, uh, I think that was under profile. Or actually another way is if you go to participant, hover over your name, you can then change your video. So let me see if I can find myself on here. Yeah, I would hit more. If you see, um, if, when you go into the participants, click on that and then you'll see the list of participants. Um, and what you can see is the little more button when you hover over your name. When you hit more, you have the option of renaming and then edit profile picture. Mm -hmm. So when you go into edit profile picture, you can choose a different picture. So right now I can choose something else. Um, so for example, I have a picture of apples. Now when I turn off my video, you should see the Apple image um, instead of the other image I had before. And then you can go in, and I'll start my video again. Um, you can also go in and rename yourself. So when you're, yeah, um, when you're in the meeting setting, um, it also depends on what has been enabled for you. Um, so right now, I believe you should be able to see everybody um, you can also click those two little, three little dots. Um, let me see, maybe it won't do it. No, the only thing I can do is, is hide video and that kind of thing. Um, but what you would normally see is that toolbar that I said before. Let me see if I can go back to that so you can see it. Um, so in general, you would have a toolbar, toolbar like the one that's showed here, and you would click and unclick the start video option and that would allow you to hide yourself or not. And then if you click this little arrow button, that will allow you to then go into um, those features that I've said, where you can see the option for virtual background, you can see other options as well. Um, yeah, any questions? Yeah, I think it's because of the, the way this meeting was set up. Um, yeah, I actually set it up to have everybody come in with their video off, but it said you should have had the option to change that once you got in, but maybe that's not happening in the webinar. And I think Mark um, has written that um, that option isn't available. Video is turned off for participants in a webinar meeting versus just a regular meeting. Yes, and if you are using the free version, you won't see all of the options. That's a good point. Um, when you're, you're doing it. But in general, you'll have the, the video, the mute, um, those types of options. Yeah, sorry about that. We were, um, Carlin actually has a webinar and I have a meeting version. Um, oh. We were trying to see what made more sense or work best. I have a question. Sure. Sure. Um, one of the things that I have not been able to do is to get when I um, go into the chat, it always puts me in as me, and I don't know how to get my name and, you know, whatever, because I've tried clicking and changing it, but um, my name's on it, on my settings, but it always has me in as me. I don't know what that means and how to fix that. It comes in as me? It's Debbie. Yeah. Debbie, yeah, Debbie what did you say? I, you know, when I, what, if I go into chat and put in a message and send it, it sends it off as me. It doesn't put my name at the front of, you know, the chat. Yeah. And I, I think that's what that. you see, Debbie. Yeah. I'm sorry, Aisha. Yeah, that's yeah. what you see. You see it from me, but everybody else is seeing when, you know, when they see it, they see it from, they'll see it's from Deborah Jones. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, it is a little confusing sometimes. Um, and I'm, I'm still getting used to the webinar version of it because I, I don't tend to use that. I use the meetings more. Um, so this is actually my first time using it from the webinar as a host view. Um, but when you come in for, into a webinar, sometimes it's, you're not sure if like your video is off or if the sound is off, um, unless like the host tells you. So it's, um, and sometimes it's hard to see on the other end. I have a question. Um, when I was on a, another meeting um, a couple of days ago, and they asked us to put our name and our state beside our name. How do we go about doing that? Okay, so there's a couple different ways. You can go into, um, 
let me see. You can go into your video settings. Um, actually, the best way is um, if you go into the participant and then you go into um, the list of your names, um, you can go in there and then right hover over, and I don't know if you can see this, but you would hover ideally over your name and it would say more or mute. Um, and when you say click over the more, it'll say, give you the option to rename yourself or to change your video um, or turn it on or off in general. So when you see that little rename option, um, you can then go in. And I think it also depends on if the host has allowed that capability, because I believe as a host, you can also um, change that. So like I can make it so that no, no names are visible in a webinar format or in a meeting format. Um, but I can go in and then I would put in a new name for somebody. So if I go into my name, I will hit rename and then I can now put um, just my initials, for example. So I've done that before where I'm in a meeting and it's um, been recorded and I didn't want people to know my name and they didn't want them to see my face. So I just went in and changed my, it to my initials and then I went ahead and stopped my video so then people wouldn't see me either. Um, so those are some things you can do. Um, Cause yeah, I've been in some meetings where they ask you to change your name for you. Um, you can also do that ahead of time. You can go into your, um, your account, your page settings, and then you can go in and change your name. Um, sometimes when you log in, if you're like, if I'm not logged into my Virginia Tech Zoom account, um, it'll ask for my name and then I can enter whatever name I want in there. Um, so it, it just depends. The personal one will let you do that too. Yeah. Um, your sound makes a difference. Um, so before creating or before joining a meeting, make sure you always test your internet connection, your audio and your video. Um, when you log in, Zoom gives you the option to test your microphone. It gives you the option to test your audio as well. Um, if you have slow or unstable internet um, or no audio, it might be um, due to limited internet connectivity. And I've had that a couple times. I know um, Harlan has had that issue as well. So sometimes it just depends on how you're connected. Um, sometimes if you just connect into um, directly into um, the internet router, then you should have, it should improve it. And then another way, if you're hosting like a large meeting, if you turn off people's videos, um, obviously with friends and family, you wouldn't, you wanna, that's the whole purpose, you wanna see them. But if you're in a, let's say a meeting of some sort, you can turn off people's videos to help if you need to. Um, it also helps like if you need to go, you know, run around the house and do something real quick while you're listening. Um, but you can also use um, a phone to call in and you can also use uh, the headset with a microphone. Um, it's not, it's better. Um, it makes it so you can hear things a bit better. And I know Carlin, she's using headphones today. Um, yeah, so for me, um, I have really poor internet, unfortunately. This is one of the problems with being in this COVID situation. You're in your home, and so a, a lot of the functionality of anything online depends on your internet. So what I do when I'm on a Zoom um, so that my voice doesn't get de delayed is I'll um, log into the Zoom using the Zoom link, and then when I, it'll give you the option to either join the audio through the computer or join the audio through your phone. And so I always choose the phone option and it gives you a phone number to call and you call that number and then you put in your meeting ID, which also is displayed there for you. And then um, you put in your, your, um, your personal ID, which is also there. So it gives you the, the meeting ID number and then your, your ID number so that um, it associates you with your name on the Zoom. Very simple process and it's really solved a big problem for me. With my internet going in and out, I used to be kicked out of meetings all the time and then I'd lose them. But now I stay in with my audio. So anybody who has a problem with internet, I would recommend you do that. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, you can also call in if you, um, instead, in general, mm -hmm. if you don't have um, internet at all, um, but then you obviously you can't see everybody. Um, so this next slide, um, this is actually a friend of mine from high school and he, I put this on Facebook and he actually posted it as like, things not to do in Zoom meetings. So for example, you don't want the camera to be coming up at an upward angle. You don't want, you know, your big hands in the way. 
You also don't want the lighting around you, so it creates a little halo effect. Um, so when you are setting up, you want to make sure that um, you do focus the camera to your face um, and that you have, um, you're looking at your webcam and not the screen. So for example, my camera right now is the one on my laptop, um, but I have a second camera on my monitor. So depending on, I always have to make sure I'm looking at the right one. Um, and then to help me, what I try to do is I try to put, well, for right now, I have my presentation mode on my laptop so that I'm looking right at the camera um, and my notes are right there. Because if I wasn't and I was looking up, you can tell now that I'm looking at a different screen. Um, and then you always wanna use your same gestures as you normally would. I talk a lot with my hands. So, you know, I'm still gonna use my gestures. Um, just cause you're sitting at home doesn't mean that you can't be, you know, as your usual self. Um, make sure you try to use your laptop cause that way you can have access to your hands in case of anything. So example, like Carlin, like if she can't access through audio from the computer, she can use her phone. And so she has that option. Um, and then gallery view is best. I, for, I didn't include that uh, image here, but basically it looks like the Brady Bunch. Um, because then you can see everybody at once. Um, so your view of the meeting, like I said, you can hide your picture, you can actually hide other people's. Um, you will have the option to move people um, to see only the person that's speaking. You can move um, the people across your screen to be horizontal or to be vertical on one side. Um, you can share your screen like I'm doing now. Um, the chat box, you can make it larger, you can make it smaller, you can move it to wherever you want. Um, in some cases, for example, if I'm taking notes, um, let's say I'm in a pro pro professional meeting, I will use one screen for the Zoom and then another screen to take notes on, or I will make the chat box look bigger so I can see that at the same time in case I need to see different things. Um, and then usually um, with friends and family, I wanna see them all. So I try to keep as many people as I can on my screen at once. Um, so one thing we want to talk about is things that you could actually do uh, with Zoom other than just have a meeting and just have people over to talk. Um, so you can do some virtual uh, celebrations. Um, so you can invite fewer guests than you would at a normal party. Um, you could add music like I did at the beginning, um, a birthday party. So this is some things I've seen a lot of is people, um, you know, put up a, invite everybody to the party. So make like a surprise party and then invite the guests of honor at the end. And then everybody sings happy birthday when they log on, for example. Um, and then another example, my sister for her birthday, um, her friends actually delivered her a basket of like, of, of spa items. And then they scheduled a party with her later that night. And it was just her and her girlfriends. And you know they would take turns. Like some of them did the mask, some of them did like a foot scrub, some of them painted their nails, and then all while talking to each other and just having a nice glass of wine. So it was a way to still connect, still have fun, and still see each other, um, but you know obviously remaining apart. Um, and I think I saw some hands up there. Um, were there some questions or anything? Uh, this is Karen. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, I good. Up? <laughs> you see my hand? Oh, good. Yeah, oh. I see a little hand there. Good. Okay, I just lowered. Okay, uh, I have, and, and we've gone too far, but I have a question. You see my picture? My picture that she just put up it, it does not cover the whole screen. And I've seen some people their pictures cover the whole screen. How do you do that? Um, this might be a better question for Mark. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on the size of the image, um, and I think that's what the main thing is. Like I think my picture. Yeah, it was smaller, um, but I, I know what you're saying. You have seen some bigger ones. Um, if you go into, let's see, video set, not video settings. Um, I think also, I think, and Mark, please chime in if I'm wrong here. But when you turn on your video, there is something called video settings. And there's a 16 to 9 widescreen view, and there's an original ratio view. And I have a feeling that might be what, um, let me see, what changes the view. I'll change, yeah, you see how my image has now changed? So what I did was I, and I'm labeled now as Princess Leia, but um, I went into my video settings and I just chose the, um, the alternate setting. So that's what you do, Karen. So I chose original 
ratio, if you choose the 16 by 9 widescreen, then your image fills the screen. Thank you so kindly. You know, and I'm on Good. a Hope that nine, um, I'm also on that 16 9 widescreen, and that changes it, but that's more for the image behind me, not so much the, the photo that you put into. The picture? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Know what I so if you can, and put that in the chat box and we will try to answer all the chat box questions. So if you guys have questions and you put them in the chat box after this webinar, we're going to go through those questions and try to get the answers for you. And then we'll send you the slides along with the answers to those unanswered chat questions. So if you have yeah. any questions, put them in that chat box. And then to add a photo in general, um, you can do this at the beginning when you have your screen, um, your login screen, you can go in. Um, and change there's you'll have a, a image of like what your login would look like and then you can there'll be options for like video or photos that kind of thing um, the other thing you can do it well you can do it while in the meeting you can like I said hover over your name and then hit um, the more feature and then you can edit your it'll say edit profile picture or add a profile picture and so this is where you in right now it's saying like change picture um, when I do this and so then you can select a picture from anywhere on your computer. So you, you might, you'd have to save pictures ahead of time so that you can see what they would look like. Um, so for example, I'm changing mine right now. And then you can zoom in or out from that photo. Um, and you'll notice that some pictures probably don't, you'll see there, it just changed um, to like a bag that says fresh food. So you can um, change it that way, but you can also um, do it ahead of time. Um, and we, what I'll do is I'll send instructions for how to do that ahead of time in the email that we send out later. Um, but one thing I want to do is just ask what you all have used um, the Zoom for. Is there any way that, um, how have you used it with your friends? Um, so go ahead, you can unmute yourself if you can um, and just give shout out ideas. I'm going to use a, one of the features here. Um, let me stop this for a second. I'm going to share a whiteboard and I'm just going to type in here. Can you all see the whiteboard? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to just type in here ideas that you might have. So the question is ideas for a Zoom meeting? With fan, friends or family. Right? Yeah, what ideas, okay. what things have you guys done? All right, so checking in on well, my, my favorite, of course, is when my son um, does uh, live Zoom meetings with us with our granddaughter, who we have been unable to see for about three months now. So we're missing her terribly, and they, they get the Zoom, and they use the camera on the computer to actually just follow her around, and we get to just see what, how she's growing and what she's doing. So I love that. And what other ways have you guys seen or heard of, of Zoom being used? Uh, this Sunday, uh, my class reunion will be having a meet and greet and social hours, so um, I can let you all know how it goes, but we're gonna have a, after we meet and greet, um, we're gonna have a jazz player playing for an hour on uh, Zoom. That's oh. awesome. Yeah, yeah and I don't know jazz music. We do religious do services. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great one. All of our yeah. Family reunion I've seen. Um, someone said is, playing games. What, is there a time limit though on using Zoom to 45 minutes? So it's originally set to about 40 minutes, but then you'll get a notification saying that it'll automatically extend the meeting for you um, if you choose to. So you can actually do it for a lot longer now and, and Zoom has changed that because of everything that's been going on. Okay, because we changed from Zoom to um, house party to have our family talks because there was no time on that. Okay, may I have an, uh, I just went through a pricing with Zoom and there are different packages. The free one is 40 to 45 minutes. You can go to Pro and that's unlimited, but you can only have 100 people and that's uh, $14.99. If you have more than 100 people, you can upgrade any time before the Zoom for up to 500 people with $50 more. So they do also have a business one, and I don't suggest anybody doing the business one. So if you have uh, 100 people 
or less and you want two or three hours, I would say go ahead and do the pro, which is uh, $14.99. Nice. Thank you, Karen. Great yeah, information. Cool. Yeah, and I've been on some where we just log off. This was before Zoom extended it. So our family would just log off and then log back on to the meeting. Um, because our some our some of our family events tend to last long. <laughs> um, somebody else said um, dinner with friends and having appetizers. That's a really great idea. How when you do that one, Mary? When you um, are you all using this cooking and having the same appetizers? Do you have a theme? I haven't done games, but what about book clubs? Um, <clears throat> I've used it with uh, a group of women that we meet periodically. I've also used it for uh, board meetings for nonprofits, and uh, <clears throat> somebody else has already already mentioned um, church services. We do a Wednesday night, just vespers, get check in with everybody, so that happens too. And um, <clears throat> and I do know that for our local Blacksburg area the lifelong learning um, group is planning to go online for the fall. So all the classes will be uh, offered online. So we're getting ready to do that. Yeah, so that's yeah, the other thing is you'll, we'll probably see more people using it for uh, longer term, um, you know, maybe the next year or so. Maybe the, the, you know, the guess is that the transition will probably continue this trend. Um, for a while as people are getting used to it and saying, well, why do we need to meet in person now and drive like those 20, 30 minutes to meet somebody when I could just meet them through Zoom? Um, so that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll see some shifts in, in how Zoom is being used. Um, the book club is a good idea too. Um, yeah. I like the idea of the jazz musician playing. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the class reunion. Um, I'm supposed to have a class reunion this year too. Um, and I was supposed to help plan it but I kind of backed away from it because I planned the last one. Um, so yeah, I think these, these are some great ideas. All and right. I just wanted to mention, Aisha, that, that little Me Too and that orange arrow, that, I did that. That's another little feature. It's called Annotate. So while Aisha is using the whiteboard and typing, I was also able to go in and just add to that. So just wanted to demonstrate that feature that you could have four, five, six people all kind of working on the same whiteboard space um, with the, this feature in Zoom as well, which I really love. Yeah, that's a, that's a really helpful point. Um, I'm gonna save this and then we can use it later. Uh, attended a birthday party early on. It was awkward because too many people suggested, um, yes, so just try to keep it to more than five to eight. Yeah, that's what I've read that you wanna have less guests than what you would normally would have in a party. Um, there, in some cases, you, there's a breakout room feature um, in Zoom. I don't, it, I don't, I'm not 100% sure if that's in the free version or not, um, but that one, you could then break out into smaller rooms and like have people like kind of meet each other. Um, yeah, that, that's a good idea about um, limiting who's in there. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. Let me know if you can see it or not. Do y'all see the PowerPoint right there? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Sandy says the breakout is not available in the free version. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's what I figured. Um, so this is a picture, and I'm sorry it's not a great picture, but I, I went to a, my cousin's baby shower, um, and so they actually, yeah, like you said, it was a little awkward at first, mainly because I didn't know their friends, um, and some of them knew each other, but, you know, I, I knew some of my cousins that were on the call. Um, and so they live in New York. Um, and so they had planned this a while back and then they decided, you know what, let's just do it virtually. Um, they try to do some people on Zoom and then some on Google hang Hangouts and they realized that, that the, the people on each of those uh, softwares couldn't hear each other. So then we all shifted to Zoom. Um, and then what they, one of the things that they did is, you know, we just talked and asked them how they're doing. Um, and then at the end, they actually showed us um, the baby's room and showed us what they had done. They, you know, showed the gifts like you normally would do. Um, you know, I think they thought it was a little awkward, but for me attending and not having seen them in so long, it, I appreciated it because I think that's one of the things that I really like about Zoom is you can see people's homes 
and you can see how they live. You can see like, oh, look at the artwork that they're interested in, or you get cool design ideas. Um, that's one of the things I love whenever I join a meeting, I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea. I like how they did that, you know, put that plant right there. Maybe I should do that at home. Um, so this is just another example of, of things that have people have done. Um, and I'm going to go back. This is a, a photo, a friend of mine um, is in chorus, and this is her choral instructor um, leading a class. And the way that they've done that is that um, they have about a dozen or so people on the meeting, um, so sopranos and altos, and then the instructor plays YouTube performance of a choir. And then everybody is si singing along muted while the conductor is conducting and directing. And then from time to time, they stop to go over different tricky things. I thought that was a really unique way of using Zoom. Um, that is something that you know you can't do in person right now, but it's still a way to stay connected, still a way to practice at home, and still have fun. Um, so I really like that idea. And I'm just going back um, to some other things. There, um, I've heard of weddings. I I had some friends that did a wedding on their balcony, um, and so they zoomed with their parents so they could see the wedding ceremony. Um, an open house. I did, um, did, did this for a friend. I gave a tour. Of, we just moved into my house about a year ago. She hadn't seen it yet. She doesn't live in this state. Um, and the idea was like, you know, eventually when she comes to visit, she could see the house. And so while we were on the phone, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So I took her on a tour, took my laptop around the house, showed her different features, different things. Um, and so next time we we're like, all right, next time you're going to do that. So I can see what your house looks like. Cause my plan was to go see her this summer. And obviously that's not happening anymore. Um, are there any questions or comments coming in right now? I have a question uh, back to your friend who did the choir rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to um, put all the images together when they show it on Zoom where everyone's singing together and it's all in sync? Yeah, um, I think you can do the grid option. So in your when you're watching, looking at the, the committee, the screen, you can do, choose options of how you see the video and display it. Um, so as the host, you can do this, but also as the attendee, you can do this, you can choose the show the grid video option. And that's what will allow you to see more people at once. Um, if it's more than a certain number, then you kind of have to keep swapping. Right, but without the lag um, of the people's voices, when they sing together, how, how do you put those together? Yeah, so what they do is they just do it on mute instead, so you can't hear each other. Mm. Um, and that's prob probably also just so that they can have their chance to practice without, you know, feeling uncomfortable. Um, but I'm not sure if they do one all together. That's a good question, though. Okay. Um, and I, maybe that's part of the reason that they, maybe that's why they've done it that way is because they realized that there was a lag in sound. Um, yeah. And I'm sure I'm, maybe she also does like one-on-one -on -one coaching with, um, with people to sing as well. I'm not sure. I'm not a singer, so <laughs> um, I'm assuming that's probably what she did. Okay. Um, so this is, somebody mentioned the book club. This is a book club that's coming up in the county I live in, um, where they're doing, they're moving their virtual, their book clubs to virtual. Um, I've also seen my niece does uh, Zoom ballet. Um, she's five years old and she dresses up in her little tutu and then everybody's in theirs and they're all sitting there and dancing and, and everything. Um, I've seen group workout sessions. I've actually attended some through extension where the, their instructor is doing the exercises and then we're each doing it. And with the benefit of that too is if you're self-conscious, you can turn the video off so nobody can see you. Um, music lessons, like I said, um, a paint night. I've heard of paint night like um, somebody said a chalk drawing, um, cooking classes. I've heard some people try to start doing those, and I believe Extension will be doing some of those later on. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard the one thing is called PowerPoint parties that teenagers are, are doing, where they're sharing um, information from classes or just testing out and just having fun. Um, and then they're, they're just doing like a quick five minute um, presentation on a topic of their choice or interesting. And it could be themed, it could be not, um, just a, a fun way to like you know, engage your peers in, in something that you know. Um, so for example, actually my husband for work, um, they do show and tells from time to time. And so they've had, you know, somebody show how to make cocktails. Um, he was trying to think of something, he's really into carpentry right now. So I was like, well, why don't you show them that, how to build something? 
Um, so th those are some cool things that you can start doing through Zoom. 4-H um, is doing a virtual camp at some point. Um, I expect that probably that might be on Zoom. Um, and then communities, um, look within your community. There's so many free events, um, you know, from, from uh, libraries to museums, um, across the world even. So there's so many different fun things that you could do um, through Zoom. Uh, this is through Extension. They are doing um, a virtual farm to table. So this is just something we wanted to show you that's something that is going on through Zoom where they, you can actually visit different farms without leaving your home. You can learn a new recipe. And so the, the recipe is recorded through, in some cases through Zoom, um, some cases it's live or they embed the video and then keep it that way. Um, and I've seen, you know, virtual tours of like, um, I think it was the blueberries and through Virginia State as well. Um, somebody mentioned game night. These are some ideas for game night. So you can do Pictionary, charades, um, and I'm, I, these links will be in here so you can see different ways to use them. Um, and the new feature spotlight basically allows us to, uh, the focus is on the one person that's doing the acting out. Um, craft night, that's another thing that you could do. This is a, a video from the Spruce, um, you know, the virtual dinner party somebody was talking about. You know, you have different food. Uh, movies, you can watch the same movie as somebody. You can brunch with friends. Like you were saying, somebody mentioned earlier, you can cook and eat together. And then theme parties. Um, I knew somebody that did a, a murder mystery theme party. And so they all dressed up, and that's what they did uh, for their party. Um, and then la one thing with um, Zoom, it's always awkward saying goodbye on Zoom. Uh, for some reason, I think it's because, you know, you're, especially right now during pandemic, everybody's usually at home, you know, you don't have the excuse as, oh, I have to go pick up my kids from school. <laughs> well, you know, you don't have that reason. <laughs> so what you can say is, you know, it's, it's just be honest. It's time for me to go. You know, I've been on so many Zooms all day. Um, I've heard people using timers. So they set a timer and they're like, all right, we have 30 minutes to do the Zoom. Pass that, we're done. Um, you can use the chat feature just to say goodbye as well. Um, yeah, and then, oops, let me see, on that note, yeah, so now what, so we encourage you, <laughs> if you don't have an account already, set one up, um, invite your friends, test it out, um, this is the main Zoom website to try things out, but let us know, like Karen, let us know how that reunion goes, um, because that's something unique and different, um, not many people get to do that, um, so let us know what fun things you do, um, or other ideas, because we're always open for that suggestion. Um, and then these are some resources for the game nights, um, some videos you can watch to learn a little bit more, um, how to use that annotation tool that Carlin mentioned, um, and then games and party tips, um, happy hour ideas, dinner parties, that kind of thing. Um, and then just want to let you know, well, Carlin, I guess if you want to talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. Just that, that this is a kind of a two-part series. This week, we just wanted to have you guys get your feet wet, introduce you to some of the um, things that you might do with Zoom, get you interested in wanting to do it, and, and helping you guys, if you haven't already, we'll go ahead and get yourself an account, set up a meeting, you know, try, try to do some of the things that you learned just basically with Zoom. Next week, we're going to provide a little bit more detail about some of the other features um that we didn't want to get into with, with this first meeting so if you're interested in that um, go ahead and please if you haven't already when you registered you would have been able to register for both of these at the same time if you've already done that you don't need to do anything but if you only um, chose today's webinar you'll need to go back in and register for the second webinar so what uh, I if might you'd like to okay. sorry carlin just what, one thing and that's one thing about zoom is sometimes it's you you don't always have the visual cues to like not interrupt somebody, so I apologize about that. Um, but one thing is what we might do for next one is change it to a meeting setting instead and send out a new registration link. Um, so that way you will see those meeting, uh, the actual tools and you can access to them and play around with them. Um, Cause I think that might make it easier for people. And, and again, as I mentioned before, um, we are going to um, send these out to you after this meeting, but before you go, We'd love for you all just to take a quick poll. We just want to, uh, it'll help us improve next week's meeting if you answer our poll honestly. If you all could um, just
quickly answer this three question post poll. That will help us know how helpful this was for you and potentially how we can improve this webinar next week. Also, if so, if you'll just take a few minutes to just answer those three questions real quick. In addition, if there are things that you really would like to know next time at, at the webinar, if you'll put those in the chat box, we'll make sure to cover them next week when we have um, our second. Yeah, and next week um, we will make sure that it's, you will have access to all those features um, so that way it's easier for you to be able to use some of those tools. Well, thank you all. We appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week. Okay.